What's your favorite scary movie? Welcome to the Killjoy Jake podcast, where instead of having friends, we have horror movies. So I am Jake, your host as always, and I am joined by the wonderful Fate Decided. What's going on, my dude? What's going on? How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Good, good to have you on to talk about VHS 94, the yes. most recent entry in the VHS franchise. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about this, this movie as, as a whole, Tyler? I'm just curious what you think about it. I, in my opinion, I thought it was the, I thought it was the funniest out of all of them. Like, cause I've seen them all and like, this one just had some like hilarious moments. Like, you know, I, I'm sure we'll go into like some certain things, but like, like a great example is like when you're watching it and then like the, was the veggie smasher thing, like just pops <laughs> up on screen. Yes. It's like, this is so like, this is so weird and random. Um, I thought it really had some, uh, some unique, like, uh, like the, the one with the, uh, with the prosthetics, you know, stuff like that. Like it was very mirrored. Um, you know, once we like get to specific ones, uh, I'll go into it more, but like, even that, like it mirrored sort of like a future in which we're going to, you know, like with like technology and advancements. I just felt like this one really, like the other ones in the past were, I felt were more like, you know, on the supernatural side, like the, you know, zombies and, you know, monsters and the vampires, things like that, which we did get in this one, but it was cool to kind of see just different elements that I felt like we didn't really get in the last ones. Um, you know, and, uh, the first time I saw it, I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. Like I, I didn't think it was great, but the second time I watched it, um, I, I found like a new appreciation for it. If that makes sense. You know, I was like, okay, this yeah. is pretty good, you know, and plus the people that made Scream. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they were executive producers on this film. They were actually supposed to do a new skit for it. They were, they did, obviously they did a skit in the first VHS, but uh, they were actually like asked to do they were like hey do you want to do a segment for this new vhs film and unfortunately they were busy with with scream not yeah. unfortunately then the new yeah. scream is gonna That's be awesome i'm super pumped for wonderful <laughs> i of course would love to see them come back to the vhs franchise in the future if there's more movies yes but yeah they were unable to do that here but, but they were producers on it at least so that's that's pretty cool i i will say i like personally it's my favorite film in this entire franchise i have so much respect for this movie for a couple of different reasons during the production of it they actually filmed the almost all these skits on a real vhs camera made copies really? of it yeah well, oh, dude this gets crazier they filmed it on a real vhs camera made copies of it played the tape back multiple like 60 70 times to wear it down to lessen the quality and then digitized it which is why this movie looks so grungy and like it's not an effect like it's not like a digital effect that they added in post or whatever they actually did that <laughs> with, with this that movie. is crazy it's so punk rock it's so yeah grun it's so grungy i just i love it i love everything about this movie Th this is the kind of movie that i personally would love to make something that looks like you're not like it's a real snuff film that you're not supposed to be watching i i love it it's so freaky and and crazy and scary but then on the other side like you said it's very silly and funny at times too yeah it's such a stew of a horror movie that i, I just i love and appreciate it <laughs> Um, director David Bruckner was also supposed to do the framing device, which was actually done by Jennifer Reeder in this uh, new movie, but uh, he unfortunately had to drop out. He, he's, he did um, Amateur Night in the first VHS, which is the one with like the siren lady who's like forehead splits yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I you, remember that, yeah. Hard to forget that one, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, well, that, so that was like a quick little thing. So like that was my, uh, my favorite one personally. Um, oh, yeah. And it, it, it was, I mean, obviously it was the first, you know, so, I mean, that was great too, but it was like the way that like I found, cause I didn't like hear about the franchise. I just like stumbled across it one day and like, it was on somewhere. It might've been Netflix or something like that. Just one day, like, I mean, years and years ago now, cause it came out in what, 2012, yeah, I believe is when it, yeah. yeah. And so like, uh, I just happened to like come across it and I watched it and I was like, this is great. <laughs> like, you know, I was just like the, the siren one, obviously the, what was it? The, the, that's the one with the park and there's like the zombies running or, and then like on the trail and stuff. I was like, that was like all of that. I was like, it, it gave me appreciation. I was like, and there's more. <laughs> and then I found like the other ones and then I was like, yeah, now I'm a fan. So it was pretty you know, cool to kind of see that. 
Tyler, I, I used to hate found footage movies. I never used yeah. to watch them. And in 2015, my buddy showed me the first VHS and my entire world was rocked. <laughs> I, like, I, that, I, that's why I think I have such an appreciation for these films because I just, I never used to like, I never used to dig them. I always used to think they were just disorienting and kind of dumb. I watched this movie. I watched all these movies. I fell in love. I watched the Creep movies. Those are also phenomenal. I'm eventually, love, yeah. Oh yeah, those are great. I'm going to eventually cover them on this, on this page. But um, just getting into this movie though, um, yeah. The Framing Device, which uh, was directed by Jennifer Reeder, who was said to be one of the most influential directors of the 21st century by Bong Joon-ho, the director of Parasite, which is kind of, oh, wow. uh, kind of crazy, that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, Parasite was a pretty interesting movie, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Bong Joon-ho is was, one of the best directors yeah. of our time, in my opinion. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. phenomenal. And for him to say something like that about Jennifer Reeder, who's really, he, I don't know, if, I, I couldn't name you any movies she's done, but I know she's done some really short, like some big shorts that got popular. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. It's high praise, you know? So I thought, yeah, I thought I'd throw absolutely. that out. Um, what do you think about the framing device for this movie? Because I have some opinions on it. <laughs> like, I, in, in, in that regard, like, are you talking about like the uh, when, when when framing? Like, what do you mean? Do you mean the camera framing, or do you mean what I mean by that is like the so we start off with the SWAT team and we keep cutting back to that. Like, it's kind of like so, the, like yeah, the, the framing around. of the film. Yeah, the, yeah, the, so the framing of the film. Sorry, I was back to. yeah. Okay, sorry, I was just trying to have like a clear, uh, perfect understanding. Of that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I uh, yeah no, I actually so I enjoyed that sort of mystery surrounding the the sort of SWAT that comes in, and I really like the. Uh, the, the sort of like horror house that they were in. I mean, obviously it was a warehouse, but like the different sets and how they're traveling through it. And you're just saying like, it's just this mystery from the jump, you know? And then, and they kind of go through this like house of horrors of like films, but it wasn't like, like past ones where they put like a cassette in the thing or something like that. It's just like, they're like traveling through. And as they pass this thing, boom, it comes on and you have like, you know, the voice in the background and, and I thought I thought the pace was really great from like start to finish. And it, it's one of those films like it, it's it's it seems like it's all over the place, but it's not like if you're if that makes sense, like if you're really like yeah. watching in the moment, um, you know, and it's kind of touched on something like you were just saying a minute ago. Like it, it's it's one of like I feel like VHS is one of those things that really is like a sort of a, a acquired taste. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I mean, obviously the found footage thing people either love or hate it but especially with the VHS is like even when I talk to people it's either they love them or they just like oh yeah it's not for me and I and, but the ones that love them like like us we're just like this is great because you got this and that and like it's just and then like but yeah even just like the little like horror or uh, comedy aspects how they're just kind of like subtly thrown in like uh like even in the the Ratma one uh you know <laughs> yeah which he's <laughs> When the I mean, guy I'm so like, excited uh, to get into that one. Oh my god, you have no idea. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll definitely get into it. But yeah, uh, but like, uh, you, you okay if I cuss on this? Yeah, no, go go nuts. I don't give a shit. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, okay, perfect. Uh, but like, uh, you know, when the guy, uh, when the camera guy is uh, is talking to her or whatever, and she's all frustrated because she's got to like walk to the sewer because she gets off the phone. And the guy's like, hey, you want to go get a cup of coffee or something like that after, like, blatantly hitting on her? And she's just like, fuck you. Like, it's just the yeah, way Jeff she said it. Jeff, go fuck yourself. Yeah, or go, yeah, yeah, Jeff, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, stuff like that, I was just like, because it's just so unexpected. It kind of out of left field. And I don't know. I just, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was, like, this sort of, like, journey from an audience perspective, if that makes yeah, sense. Like, yeah. you're just kind of traveling through. And then once, like, it's all revealed at the end and it's this, you know, cult aspect and you know even like the SWAT people are on it it's just like whoa like what is going on here <laughs> like, yeah. you know it, it was pretty cool so I, I personally enjoyed it I like my biggest criticism of the VHS franchise is typically your wraparound segment where you keep cutting back to the whole time that's supposed to connect all the short films it doesn't do the purpose it doesn't really connect all of them which is my one of my biggest problems with it I think Honestly, and this is probably an unpopular opinion, VHS Viral, which I think is unanimously considered the worst in the entire franchise, yeah. does the best job of that. It actually has a wraparound segment that's interesting and cool. It still doesn't end very well, which is unfortunate because I think it's a cool setup to something yeah. that it, it could have been. We talked about this, me and Bran from Bloody Breakdown talked about this last week. Oh, okay. And we were saying like, it's like, dude, it doesn't, 
connect, it doesn't connect the short, like it's almost there, but it's not quite there. None of these movies do that successfully, which is so unfortunate. And I think this one kind of goes back to what the first two movies were doing, where it's just like, it's people watching videotapes or it's a cults watching, making, yeah. saving these videotapes. But why do they have them? I want to know what, like, are they broadcast? Like in the third one, you kind of touch on, they're broadcasting them to the world to be super fucked yeah. up and to mess with people, like control people's minds. And it's like, oh, that's cool. But this film goes back to what the first two movies were doing and doesn't really, does it doesn't connect the shorts. Like they're all good shorts, but this wraparound segment doesn't really do anything with that. I, I will say it has some cool scenes. There's some like the eyeballs being gouged out and shit. That's fucking yeah. disturbing. The end of the framing device is like the girls killing him with the camera, which I think is always yeah. cool. I've seen that in a few found footage movies now. And it's a cool, it's a cool way to kill somebody, but it's just nothing super standout special to me, which is unfortunate. Cause I think the rest of this movie, unanimously, this is the only VHS film where all four of the skits are really good, original and inventive. Yeah. I really like all four of them. And that's why it's my favorite in the franchise personally. Um, but like any, any last thoughts you wanna say about the framing device before we really get into the bread and butter of this movie, which is the four skits? Yeah, right. I, uh, <laughs> so, it, it, I mean, it, it is, like, I agree with you. Like, and, and even like, it's like they, they would throw like subtleties out there to kind of like, you know, like help us grasp what's going on, but like not the full details. Like a great example is like, when, you know, like people are like, seem to be in a trance or whatever. And like towards the end, when the guy's all tied up with the two SWAT girls and he's like, it, it, so what, he's in a trance? And it's like, wait, what? Like, what is going on? Like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, no, he's dead. And it's like, but they don't even show him on camera. He's off camera <laughs> yeah. while the guy's talking about it. And I'm just like, so wait, what is going on? So like, is, is everybody dead? Is like, you know, and they're just kind of treacherous through this thing. And like, you hear like the, even like the, the radio, which I thought was a cool aspect which I would have, I would have liked to see like that be like the narration. And in, in, in I get what, yeah, I get what you're saying. The voice over the intercom thing or whatever, the all are welcome thing. Is that what you're talking about? Well, no, no, no uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, that, or uh, even like the SWAT guys, like as, cause, oh, cause they I split up. Right. And you can hear the SWAT come on the radio. We're in trouble over here. Da, 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 that kind of thing. Like, yes. ah, they're getting like killed and taken out and stuff. Like it would have been cool to kind of like, like, as because they split up and each are going to like different locations in this warehouse and stuff it would have been cool to say like oh it's a tie into whatever like even the doctor like you know let's say that was his warehouse and he was like you know something like that like you could have like narrated the story in that aspect and and not took off from from the screen and like you know people that are paying attention are going to grasp that um whereas like yeah it just it just felt and that, and that was my biggest issue in the beginning is like i felt like it was, I, I, like I said, I like the, the sort of treaching through this horror, you know, uh, you know, like a haunted uh, house, like house, house. Yeah. Like this horror house. But like, I felt like there was no like real beginning, middle end. Like, if yes. that makes sense. Like there was no, it was just There's like, no narrative. There's no narrative yeah, where there could yeah. be, you know, and it, you know, it could be this cool yeah. story that connects all the, the skits, but it doesn't, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that that was. I mean, I think that's kind of the intention. It's supposed to be just a bunch of random, like it's supposed to be the mystery, like, you know, and we're supposed to kind of, you know, take it for what we think it is, um, you know, and, but yeah, I mean, overall, it's just like, like, okay, like, what do we really learn? We learn that, you know, there's this cult that is obsessed with the, with the horror film aspects or making their snuff films and stuff like that. But like, other than that, like, and yeah, like these are like their collection, but like, uh, so, so are vampires really in this world? Is like Ratma really in this world? Like, yeah. or are these yeah. just like made films? Like, and I'm like, me personally, I'm fine with the mist, the mystery. I just wish there was like a little bit of something to go off of to formulate theories. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I wish there was yeah. like, okay, there's a, cause like, I honestly don't know what's going on in this framing device. At one point, we're talking about a cult. The ending is like, oh, these two people who were part of the SWAT team that was going to stop the cults, who's like stopping them from having this, like these drugs or whatever. Because if you look, all of them have like this white, like goo dripping out of their mouth. And yeah. that's, they're there to like stop them from consuming that because that's like a drug or something. Dude, after watching this film like six or seven times, I've kind of picked up <laughs> on it a little more, but it's still just so like, what the hell is going on here? Like, it's so not consistent. I wish 
they could have just taken a little more care into actually formulating some kind of a narrative just to give us yeah. something to go off of. Like maybe there's a cult who collects these snuff films that maybe they have nothing to do with them, but they collect them and maybe that's the mystery. But to, just to give us yeah. that, that it's a cult that collects these crazy snuff films where this weird supernatural shit happens, that would be cool. That's something to go off of, you know, but we don't, we don't even get that really. They, they, they just kind of, it's this weird cult. They do drugs. And for some reason, the shit's playing in the background. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I wish we just had a little, just a tiny bit shred of something to go off of, but which we don't, unfortunately. But moving past the one, that one blemish in this movie, I think, honestly, God, the rest of this is so enjoyable and fun. Chloe Okuno's Storm Drain, which is maybe my favorite short of the entire movie. Once again, uh, this was like, it was filmed with a VHS camera. They ran, yeah. made copies, ran it back, digitized it. So fucking cool. You can see that in this, in this, yeah. how, like just how grungy this, this one feels and looks. They actually filmed this in a storm drain in Toronto, Canada, which is really, oh so, yeah, it's so cool. It and the other thing is technically it takes place in like Athens, Ohio or, or, or around. Yeah, there. Something, they, they, yeah. They have a city name. It's like, what, like Woodsville or something, Ohio. <laughs> Um, but I, I don't know. So it's like in my backyard, essentially, which I think is so cool. Uh, and <laughs> for what happens in this skit, it's fucking amazing. Tyler, what do you think about <laughs> Chloe Okuno's Storm Drain? Oh, and real quickly, Chloe Okuno is, she's not, she's kind of an up and, up and coming director. She made, did you subscribe to Alter on YouTube? No, I am not. I've never even heard of it. So that's a YouTube channel that pumps out these like horror short films. They put out like one or two a week. Chloe Okuno made one called Slut. I don't love that word, but that's the title of this, <laughs> yeah. of this thing. It's really good. I highly recommend it. It's one of the better shorts from that entire page, in my opinion. So make, make sure to okay. check that out if you haven't seen it. She's, she's a phenomenal director, uh, and she got invited to do a VHS skit. And, and she's doing a new A24 film in the future, which is going to be sick. Oh, really? I can't wait to see that. But what did you think of uh, Storm Drain, my dude? I uh, I mean, well, first, Hell Ratma, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> <You know>? Hell <laughs> Ratma. <laughs> That was uh that was that was a twist. I mean, so I really liked I like I, I mentioned it earlier, my, my favorite one, which obviously we'll get into, is the is the prosthetic one, but for different reasons. But this one was probably like right there. And it was just like so out there and bizarre. Like it's just this like, you know, like this it, you're you're going through this like it, it's like this weird news thing, you know, you get channel six to do a report, she's upset. And then they, they go into this drain because the guy's standing out there with a gun waiting for Ratma. But you don't know that. You just think it's some creepy weirdo that's just, like, wants to be on TV or something. Yeah. And then they, like, get into the sewer. And then it's just this, like, you know, domino effect. You know, the, the guy thinks he sees something. And it's that typical, like, let's go check it out rather than, like, <laughs> let's get out of here. And then, like, you know, you see all the homeless people. And it's this aspect of just, like, it, like this, like, underground sewage colony really is what it kind of seemed like to me and then like you have like this guy the guy gets picked up and gets dragged over to the sewer thing you just see this like you know <laughs> alien queen looking yeah. that's the first thing i thought about because like the way that it's face is like i was like this is the alien queen but like what is that goo dude because, I, like i, I don't like, know <laughs> Yes. Like the guy takes like a spoon of it and I get it. It's like this cult thing. Like they're like obsessed with this thing. Like uh, was that, so I was trying to like tell because it's so quick and it's like a side view. Was the guy, the, the guy who was uh, like scoop the goo. The and stuff like that? Was that the same, was that the same priest that walked by? Yes. Okay. Yeah, That's dude, what I thought yeah, it's too. It's the minister from earlier who says something. Yes, he's like, okay. I think all the sinners are going to get what they deserve. It's the same dude. And that's yeah. why he says, um, that's why he said, like, he's talking to um, Holly is her name. And he says something yeah. like, oh, you thought you were going to do one of your little news stories on us. Well, no, yeah. you're, you're, you have to fall to our rat God and all this shit, dude. Yeah. It's, I just, oh my God. I love this fucking skit so much. It's, I don't know. I, I was geeking out. The first time I watched this, I had kind of low expectations because the last VHS movie was so meh. Yeah. I was thinking, okay, well this, you know, whatever, this is going to be fine, I guess, whatever. And then this, I saw this and I'm like, holy shit, this is so weird and yeah. creepy and crazy. And I just, I live for this kind of shit so much. 
the um yeah there's a lot of mystery with this one but also at the same time there's a really cool narrative here there they interview this guy at the beginning who's clearly kind of creepy he's like a yeah. minister at a church or something but then he's running this underground cult in the sewer with all these homeless people who are yeah. <laughs> like worshiping this massive rat demon creature dude it's so fucking weird i i don't know i just i I gotta, I gotta control myself a little bit because I'm just gonna start geeking out and not just lose all the information in my brain I have about this. But um, yeah, I, I love, I just love this skit so much. It's so weird, it's so bizarre. I actually love the characters too, even though we don't yeah. really get to know them that well. Holly has a drinking problem, which is something that's kind of played for laughs, but also like um, what we were talking about earlier, like he says like, hey, you wanna go out for a drink with me? And Holly yeah. says like, hey, go fuck yourself, Jeff. Yeah. But we learn later on that she has a drinking problem and that's why he said that, which is so, which is so funny, yeah. you know? There's little there's little moments like if you don't if you miss it it's like oh my god it's, you, you totally missed that joke you can re-watch this skit multiple times because i didn't dude i didn't catch the minister thing the first time i watched it yeah and maybe it was maybe like the either. third or fourth time that i watched it where i was like oh, that's the same dude from earlier no way so yeah. yeah it's it's great i just i love this skit so much yeah I, and uh and then like the way how it like like you like the guy gets like from that goo whatever that is i still still try to figure that out but like you know he gets like acid faced like and he dies and then like you think the same thing's gonna happen to the girl and it's just like kind of dripping on and then like it cuts and then they're like in the news studio and you're like so how did she get out like yeah like it was like and then and then you see obviously then it's like you know after the news reports and then she's like spitting out the goo and stuff and i'm like what is this goo <laughs> yeah. Well, There's more I, questions than answers. After after I watched this a few times, I think what it is is that the goo is like it's like an approval thing. If it's like if, if it yeah. burns your skin, you're not you're you die. But if it doesn't, yeah. you're part of the ratma cult and you're like converted yeah. or whatever. And that's well, why like the priest guy. Sorry, go ahead. So uh, yeah, no, I was gonna say, well, the priest guy, he uh he like says that like uh that ratma only if like you're pure or whatever, something along those lines. So like. Yeah, so I was like, wait, like, so she's like, what is the, what is the definition of pure? Because she has right. A drinking there's problem. So, there's like, so many questions. Like, there's so like, many. There's that I love that. Like, you have a little bit to go off of, but then there's like, there's still that mystery at the end that makes you yeah. ask so many questions. It's like, what is it about her? Does it have to do with her drinking problem? Maybe like, maybe it's because yeah. she has a problem or something, and she's trying to fix it. I don't know because I'm trying to think like, what are other characteristics of Holly? that it could that would make her like this pure part of this crazy cult you know i i don't know it's so interesting i love the um, yeah my favorite and my favorite part of this whole skit is the ending where she goes back and yeah. reports on the news and she's saying shit wrong she's like she's like oh at the local harvest festival people are competing to be the best ratma and the guy's just looking at her like what is this girl talking about <laughs> And then she's like, I, this is horrible that I find this so funny, but she spits all that goo into his face and it melts Dude. his whole entire face. <laughs> yeah, just say everything, yeah. Dude, it's so funny and so gross. I just, I love it so much. And she just looks at the camera and's like, hail Ratma. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, just so casual. Yeah, it's so like nothing ca happened. Just like another Wednesday at the office. She just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was right. great. Like I did, I loved it. But I think that's like, but I think that's the point that, people need to understand when like watching these VHS films, whether you've watched them or not, whether you like them or not, it's like, they're not, they're made specifically the way that they're made. Like they're not, they're not like, it's, it's not some, you know, blockbuster film. That's some, you know, it's that you're going to, you're going to go sit and it's going to have like a perfect story. Like it's, it's literally just like almost like an anthology of just all these like random moments and like, it's all, it's supposed to be this jumbled mess. And, and that's why I'm, that's why I was saying earlier, I think it's like, it's really an acquired taste. Like I'm a huge fan of like the cheesy B rated movies. And this is like a B point five or B plus type. You know yes. what I mean? Like, it's not really like, it's not an A cause it, you know, but it's not like, it's not a complete B rated film where you know, like this is gonna be trash. It's like, it's better than that, but it's like right in between. It's like its own like little category sort of. Right, cause it's like, it's schlocky at moments, but then like, dude, honestly, when that thing is crawling out of, out of the sewer drain and it's making that noise, it's actually like scary. You're you're scared in that moment. Yeah. But then immediately, like a minute later, you're laughing because <laughs> this girl just spit yeah. a bunch of puke into the guy's face and it melted his entire face <laughs> yeah, off. It's, <laughs> it's the back and forth like that is just, it's done so well, it's so fast paced. I just, I love it so much. It's so, it's like such a, um, it fulfills this wonderful B-movie need inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, like, it's great. you know what it's like, you know what a good way to put it? It's like, 
It's like if a B-rated movie got a budget. Yes. <laughs> you know? yes. It's like it's like if a B-rated movie they were like, here's twenty million dollars. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's like okay, cool. Like, let's make this happen. Like, so we're just gonna make know, the same I, movie but with a budget, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like that. That's that's kind of what it is. But but it's like it is. It's, it's beautiful in its own way. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's. Like people love, and this is this is one thing I wanted to compare uh, the the next segment to. But uh, they uh, like it's like a like Black Mirror before Black Mirror. You know, like Black yes. Mirror is a bunch of like weird random stories. Like yeah, there's more of a story. It's more of like you know a, a beginning, middle, end. But I mean, this is like essentially just like that same concept of just a bunch of like really weird, far out there, make you question your existence type <laughs> moments, and you're just like. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Like you leave those movies and you're just like, I think I need an evaluation because <laughs> like something, something's wrong with me that I just sat through that and got excited. <laughs> right. Right. And I, like, personally, that's just what I, I love and enjoy about it. And I, I like, but also as a fan, I recognize that, you know, like something yeah. personally that I do, which I think like, I think it's funny, but none of my friends do is I like all these behind the scenes po- pictures of Ratma got posted by one of the producers. Yeah. I believe his name is Josh Goldblum. And he, I like, I follow him on Twitter and I've taught, I've gone back and forth with him a few times on the platform. And he's posted all these behind the scenes pictures of like whoever the dude was playing Ratma. And yeah. I will like, dude, my camera roll, I have like 10 or 12 pictures of behind the scenes <laughs> pictures of Ratma and I'll just put them up on my story. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, isn't she beautiful or something like that? <laughs> and my friends are like, what the fuck is this? Cause they've never seen this movie. They have yeah. no idea what the hell I'm talking. They're like, what is this rat creature with these nipples, dude? Stop posting that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some just... weird fetish. <laughs> Right. And my friends think I'm crazy. And I'm like, and they'll message me that I'll be like, Hey, feel free to screenshot this dude. I know you're going to want it. And I don't know. It's just, it's a silly thing I do, but um, yeah, I, I love it. I, I, re- I recognize that it's very silly and, and crazy, but it's just, it's so, it's so fun. It's so de- you, where else are you going to see a rat creature spit black spit into exactly. someone's face and melt their, their face? You're not going to get that anywhere else. I, I just, I love it. It's, it's so much fun. Who comes up with stuff like that? You know what I mean? Who's right. sitting in the board? Like, you know what would be a great idea is if we had this giant rat looking Xeno queen that just like walks up and just spits, you know, like, hey, I, I could just see somebody, like, this is how I see it. Like, somebody who's watching Alien and going, that should be a rat. Cause that's basically what it is. I mean, even the goo is yeah. like, <laughs> with like, it's like, it's alien, but with a rat in the sewers with the plot line yeah. of wreck. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's yeah, all those exactly. things mixed together. I love it. It's so nothing else yeah. is like this. You know, it's so, it's so great. Yeah. I, I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> But um, any any final thoughts on this? Because uh, unfortunately, like I, dude, I could talk about this skit all day. <laughs> yeah, honestly, but yeah. yeah. But any any final thoughts on uh, the storm drain by Chloe Okuno, my dude? Uh, I mean, I mean, it just I, I just thought it was a uh, it was a very interesting way to kind of set the tone for these going forward. I thought it was, I mean, like I said, it was it was probably my favorite next to next to the next one we'll talk about with the the prosthetics and the doctor and stuff like that. But uh, like uh. I just, I just thought overall it was, it was, uh, again, it was just interesting. It's probably the best way to put it. Cause it's just, it's so out there and it's just such like, it has just this like ride where you're just like, you think it's one thing and then it's completely another. And then this like thing comes out and you're just like, what is going on? I, I just, I, I love, that's one of the things that I've always loved about the VHS is that like, you never know what you're going to get with these, like these little like VHS films. Uh, and then just the the whole aesthetic of it, you know, like you were saying, like with the VHS, it looks very grungy, like, and to have that, I just thought, I don't know, I just thought, I thought it was really, uh, it was a well done, well orchestrated, and then you go right into like the, the veggie smasher, and it was just like, what? <laughs> yeah. like, this is, this is life, huh? okay, I just, I don't know, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I really enjoyed this skit. I think for what it is like, yeah. And it's, it's so, it, it was actually very low budget. Like I said, like this is a very punk rock movie. Like they do this whole, the whole set of them in the new studio was filmed in a hotel room. Like they literally built this set in, in a hotel room with these two yeah. actors to come in. 
it was like they just put their all into it with all their passion to make this crazy horror film with all these different like weird ideas i just i love it so much the spirit of this movie is just so fresh and original and inventive it's probably my favorite horror film of the of the year and this skit captures that more the most out of all of them in my opinion i i love it so much but yeah (laughs) it's great chloe okuno is a fucking amazing writer and director i cannot wait to see what she does next especially with a24 dude yeah one of the that's that's pretty that's pretty cool one of my one of my favorite production companies she's now working with so i I cannot wait to see what she does next but moving in to the empty wake written and directed by simon barrett who is no stranger to this franchise he did um one he was he's in like almost all the movies He's the naked dude in both one and two who's like boning some girl or whatever. Oh, <laughs> he's like the bald, yeah, he's the bald dude that's like boning some girl in like the first two, mo- in the first two movies, which is so weird. What a great job. I know, right? He's, <laughs> he's, he's so relevant in this franchise doing some, some yeah. weird ass shit. But um, he writes and direct this, directs this one. Uh, he's done like, I, I cannot think of any of the movies that he's done, but he's he's been all over the place in the horror, yeah. horror world. And this one is really interesting. I, I just love how um this one's like a lot more subtle than the other ones which i think is cool but yeah. what did you what did you think about the the coffin one where the the dead body and the, the oh yeah, yeah yeah that that was the next one huh yeah okay i yeah. I, I thought i got mixed up on my yeah no that one okay so i i enjoyed the premise this like you know you, just just the thought of being able to put yourself in a in a in a uh morgue you know in a funeral home uh, by yourself in this storm like the setting was perfect from like a horror standpoint my only issue is I felt like it dragged on too long like I felt like you you established what you had going on and then it was just like because like the whole segment is like whatever like 20 minutes or so uh, of the film but like there's like literally like five minutes of just dead space it was just like you know and, th- and that was like my biggest issue because I actually think that that might have been my favorite one if it wasn't for just like, there was literally a moment where I was just like, all right, can we get to like, what is going on? Cause it, it was very clever. Like how you have the setup, like the family, like there's this huge storm. So you're going to be here alone for a while until it calms down. But, but it's like this mystery surrounding this guy, you know, they set it up perfectly where it's like, you know, like the, the girl's like, why is the, why did the coffin move? And he's like, Oh, I probably bumped it. So I fix it. And then throughout the night, it just keeps like slightly shifting. You know, it's just like, yeah. it's nothing major. It's just like, kind of like all, to the point where like, you're even questioning like, like, is that really moving? Or is it just like in this, like this girl's just in her own head. And, and I really like that, like psychological aspect uh, to that thing. But like, I just felt like there was so much you could have just like completely cut out, you know, like there was like, like the, there's like three minutes of her, like talking on the phone with her friend, talking about like, you could have just made a quick like rap like yeah it's creepy here like you know and then like the the guy shows up and he just like it is creepy in and of itself he just stands there just staring at the thing puts his hand on the guy and then just leaves and that's it and then you get like the big reveal a couple minutes later and then the whole story just like it again it was just like this mystery and it was like this slow burning mystery that i thought was great except for like, i just felt like you know if, if they would have cut out like maybe five minutes of that and just kind of got to like had the the introduction to like what is going on ha- kind of set the tone of her being in that funeral home just kind of waiting around uh you know that that the setting I thought and then like get to like the creepy guy and then the reveal of like what is really going on I think that would have been a perfect like yeah. perfect like it probably would have been one of the best out of the entire franchise because it was just so yeah, like it was just very psychological. Like, well executed and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um my my thing about it, like I didn't appreciate this one the first time I watched it. This was like probably my least favorite the first time I watched it. But mm-hmm. the more I watch it, I realize it's more about the subtleties and the the little clues that like lead. It, this one's all about the mystery. The other ones are like, yeah, they got the mystery element, but it's kind of more about like the creature reveal, all the all the, all yeah. the other ones in, in this, especially the the subject, which you were just talking about with yeah. the prosthetic limbs and all that. That's all about the, the you know, that's more yeah. about like the crazy creature reveals in, in that one, which is so cool. It's almost like the Iron Man, which we're going to talk, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, because that one was probably yeah. my second favorite. Is Like that one's so good. I can't wait to talk about yeah. that. But this one was more about the mystery of like, who is this guy that she's um, hosting this wake for? Um... And the, 
like the weird demonic shit surrounding this person and how yeah. cra crazy he was. They talk about how, like, at the very beginning of the skit, you know that, like, the guy died in some kind of weird way. It's a closed casket wake, yeah. specifically, is what they say. Like, he died in some weird way. You don't you don't find that out until later on. So you're like, you're already wondering, like, what who yeah. is this like, guy? What is what going on? <laughs> the entire time you're presented basically only, like, two shots besides the fact that um, she actually is holding a camera sometimes and she'll walk around and, like, go around the rest of the building with, like, the flashlight on. But besides that, you're trained to be folk, tra trained to be scared of this one shot, very similar to, like, Paranormal Act activity that does yeah. this where it keeps cutting back to the the bedroom scene and like every time you go back there you're kind of scared again you know what i mean you get this false sense of security during the daytime shots of that movie but then you get back to the bedroom and paranormal activity and you're just like oh shit something's gonna happen now <laughs> so seven. Yeah. yeah and they kind of do that here where it's like you get this shot of the like you get the shot of the the coffin and you're constantly like waiting for something to pop out of it, you know, and the entire time, like it gets more suspenseful, more things happen. You get more clues as into what, who is this guy and what's he doing? The guy that shows up is saying all this weird, like ritualist, ritualistic <laughs> shit. Something I caught on this viewing is that he specifically says, oh, hey, I thought there was supposed to be a really tall man here that was good. That was going to be was going to be at the wake and he's like and she says no um no he had to he was he's busy doing something and the guy's disappointed and why yeah. that is is now that i figured out this time because dude it all clicked for me that this, watching it like literally the sixth or seventh time <laughs> was that he wanted to put the soul of that dude into the big into a big strong man instead of like a a, a woman like a did you woman, get what i'm yeah. saying by that like, yeah, yeah i get that yeah yeah and it's really fucked up and scary the fact that he's like trying to transfer a soul into a new body from this this crazy yeah. guy who was like pr probably part of some weird cult or something it's so interesting and so much more deeper than you would have thought your first you're on your first viewing which i i really i've really come to appreciate this one because like i said i yeah. did i at first it felt like it didn't really fit or whatever but it's much more about the mystery elements and the the, the creepiness surrounding it of what you the unknown more than the creature reveal because you know the yeah. cool the guy's the guy is cool with the, like his head's half cut yeah. off and he can't see that's a, that's a cool reveal but it's not as um it's not like it's not as shocking as the other ones when you see like the vampire in the last skit with a fucking yeah. mouth like yeah, it's, yeah. You, know, you know what i'm saying yeah it uh well and also too like to touch on like what you're saying like in the beginning like they even say like he got in an accident and that the family requested for him to be put together like and so like he's so like immediately you're like wait what like what happened to this guy and like you know you think he's in and then he gets out and he's just like this like corpse thing it's just it's like is he a zombie is he is he a D like what is this guy and i and i really like i really like the mystery like like i said the second time going around it, i really found the appreciation i didn't think about the soul thing like that that kind of like does make sense now that like you put it together but like just i i really enjoyed like i just i felt like if they would have they would have basically cut the fat. I think it would have been a lot better. Cause I think yeah. like, you know, cause they did a great job establishing sort of this mystery. And like you said, honing in on, on this, on your, you know, your target for what you want the audience to focus on. And then you have the girl just kind of going about her business, just kind of bored, you know, she's sitting there reading a magazine, you know, she's just like trying to pass the time waiting for these people. You got this crazy storm outside. I just thought the setting was perfect for just this, like, like I said, yeah. like this, just mystery and then and then like you get you get like 10 minutes into it and you're like okay like so what's going on like what what is this and then like the guy comes in and you're like okay now it's starting to get good and then like he just kind of like is in and out and you're just like okay so maybe that's not it and then you know five minutes later boom you have the reveal of like what the thing really is cop falls over all that stuff and it's just like okay like that's great but like I wish you would have gotten there quicker. You know? it, yeah, it, it's a slow burn to a big punch at the end, which is yeah. why I feel like it's totally like structure wise, completely different from the other skits in this. Yeah, in this one. absolutely. I you are like the thing is, though, by the time you, that cast gets moving and you're watching it like bump and stuff and you see it and like the girl's all scared, she's run to the door and she comes back and it's just laying on the ground open. Dude, you're like, that's scary, yeah. man. That is immediately yeah. scary. It's spooky. It feels like a 60s or like early 70s psychological thriller. I love it, man. I mean, I, it's really yeah. different. You don't see this type of horror anymore nowadays too much which is a shame like this, like a bare bones psychological thriller like this. It's cool. It's very, it's very different. Yeah. You don't really see this stuff anymore. I, I like it. I don't know. It was, it was fun. You know, you know what it, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like a, a Tales from the Crypt, 
like episode, you <laughs> yes. know, something like that. Yeah, you know? Like where it's spooky, that's sort of, you know, yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah, something like that where like, yeah, it just, it was, it was one of those type of like films, like like the old school tale from the crypt. Like even like the way it was shot and stuff, it was just like, okay, like I can see this, like, where's the crypt keeper? I'm waiting. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. But, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I really like this one. I think it's fun. It's, uh, it's, it's weird. It's, it's scary. It's, it, but it, I think it is still probably my least favorite, but with that being said, it has some tight, tight competition. Well, yeah. I mean, all of the other skits in this are all so good. And, and this one is great too. I, I love it. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun watch. I feel like it does fit into this movie more than I would have thought when I first watched it. But uh, any, any final thoughts going into Simon Barrett's The Empty Wake though? Uh, no, I mean, nothing like too major. Like I said, I, I, I enjoyed it for kind of what it is. You, you are right though. It doesn't, it didn't really fit with everything else that's going on. It's kind of like its own thing. You know, you got like, these three stories that are just like, like, you know, you're on this like yeah. rocket ship of a journey. And then this was more like, you know, like, like I said, something you'd see on like a, a TV special or something like that. Like, you know, just like your typical scary story. Like, uh, and, and, uh, but I mean, not that, that that's a bad thing. Cause I, like I said, I enjoyed it, but it's just, it is, it, it's sort of out of place. Like, that's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, I, almost I, I mean, this- so much, I was going to say so much so that like, I didn't even like, you know, I completely skipped it when we were when I was saying, "Oh yeah, our next segment is gonna." Like, I didn't even think about it. So you brought it up. I was like, "Oh yeah, that that is what you know." So I mean, it yeah, it tells I, you what you know. Yeah, I, I almost feel like this would fit more in like a creep show movie or, or like Tales from the yeah, Crypt. Like that's saying. another. Yes. That's another one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I yeah. totally agree with that. It, it's it's good. I love it, but it's like it's not as VHSy as some of the other yeah. skits are here. But it's still great. I still love it. It's it's still a lot of fun. Simon Barrett said a great writer and director. Man, I mean this. It was cool. It was, it was a fun time. But moving into your favorite, and it, dude, I'm not gonna lie, this was this was my favorite the first time I watched it because this this one's so fucking cool. It's so yeah. this one's so unique. It sticks. When you are done watching this movie, this is the one that sticks in your head, I think, the most. Yeah. Uh, the subject by Timo Gijanto, who he's uh, he did the um, the cult one in VHS two, the one where it's like the Heaven's Gates kind of cults oh, where he, the dude explodes into blood and like they birth yeah. the a- antichrist or whatever antichrist, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that one, that one's really cool. Timo Gijanto once again has another great skit in this one. I mean, he is two for two with these movies yeah. in my opinion with basically doing what is the, the Iron Man, which is like Tet- Tetsuo or whatever that director who made that crazy film back in like the eighties. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's very similar concept. It's like not, me- not, not that I can recall. It, the, it's a really obscure film. It's basically like, uh, it's the same idea. Like a doctor is like uh, trying to like mesh um, metal and flesh together and make like a yeah. robot person, cyborg. You know, it's it's a horror film about that. And they they do that here, which is so cool. Um, I, I love this one. What, what uh, Another note about Timo Gijanto is he's directing the American remake of, La- of Train to Busan, which- yeah. I don't know yeah. if it needs a remake, but they're they're doing it. James Wan's producing it. Who knows? It yeah. could be good. The title of it's a little cringe. It's called Last Train to New York. In New York, yeah. Yeah. And fucking garbage. What I the was hell, like, dude? I, I mean, you knew you knew it was gonna be something like that. As soon as they said that they were doing an American remake, it was like it's gonna be train to New York, train to LA, something stupid like that. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. But yeah, you're right. It is one of those films that like I don't think it needs a remake, but I mean we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, I, I hope it's good. Yeah, T- Timo yeah. Gijanto's directing it should be good. But what did you think of his skit in uh, VHS ninety four? So yeah, so like like I said, it was it was my favorite for for many reasons outside of just like I thought it was a very interesting and fun skit. But obviously, it's the the Frankenstein's monster type you know skit. You know, it, it's very Black Mirror in the sense of like what is going on and and uh, and but beyond that, it's like. It's called the, 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 he's like the prosthetic doctor. Like you see the news thing and he's like, you know, he's this, uh, mad scientist that, you know, is, is criticized for his studies and experiments on people. And it, it really makes you think like, I, I, like I was watching it. I'm just like, I wouldn't be surprised if that's happening right now, somewhere in this world, like somebody <laughs> trying to put together. Cause you have like the crazy scissor guy. That's just like a tank of it, of a whatever, and he's just plowing through all the military people that are trying to shut down this lab. And it just like, it just had, it had a great sort of mystery to it. Cause like even the girl, like how, like, you're like, what is going on? Like what at first do you think it's like maybe her eye or something like they replaced her eye with the camera 
and all that stuff. And it's just like this, like, like mystery of what is going on. And everyone's like freaking out over the way she looks. And you're like, man, she disfigured. And then they show like what she actually looks like on the TV. So you have like a sense of like, okay, like this is just some like innocent girl that just got abducted by this crazy scientist to be experimented on. And you see all the other people and they're like arms are replaced. They're like, you know, chest is replaced with like a computer. Like, so like all this like crazy stuff and you're like what is going on and then the girl gets to the mirror and it's like her whole head is a camera and it's crazy because you see it says live at the top and then you know you have like the the charge the battery you know it's at like three bars or whatever and it's like it has that mystery of like well what happens when the tra and as she's like fighting through it it starts dropping down and it's like well what happens like does she die like you know like yeah. does she have to re like what happens if you forget to recharge like <laughs> right. it's just it's just this bizarre, crazy of a mess, but more so it's just kind of, it's, it, I mean, it's obviously in an extreme way, but it's really a, uh, it's in many ways, it's really a glimpse into our future, you know, with all the prosthetics, like how advanced are we going to be eventually? You know, it's the age old question. Like when is the day that we're, that we're more robot than we are human, you know, where uh, your entire body is essentially robotic, you know, your eyes, your ears. I mean, even like, Elon Musk with like Neuralink and stuff like it's supposed like they the uh, there's like an Australian team or something like that, that like created an eye that like can do all this stuff like people that are blind in their eye can have, like it's all stuff that was like that's like like right now like you could go like it probably probably cost a fortune but if you have the money and you lost an eye like you could probably go get like a full functioning eye I mean Neuralink supposed to launch you know next year or whatever like so it's like it's it's that whole like mystery the irobot type thing uh i just yeah. i don't know I, i've always found that stuff fascinating like again obviously it's a, it's way extreme <laughs> but i mean people have done crazy things like that i mean we've had scientists that have like tried cloning people trying to like mutate people you know like you know the human centipede type thing so <laughs> i don't know i really i could talk about it for a while uh, forever because you're, you're right. Like, even though this is an extreme version of that, there is like real horrors being described yeah. here, which I think is so scary. Yeah. And like, it's a thing, something that's been talked about for a while now about like, like is uh, the side, the whole idea of cyborgs, like, is that going to ultimately be our downfall is like robots yeah. versus machine and stuff. And it's not even too crazy to think about. It's not even sci it's not even science fiction really anymore because of the, the um, insane in advancements in robotics that we've made. So is this something we should fear? Is this something we should embrace? Who you know? Who knows? It all depends on how we execute it, I guess. And it's something really scary and risky to deal with. And I love it. I, it that is definitely something portrayed here in this skit. I this one is less about the the like the mystery and stuff. Like yeah, we get some of the the broadcasts on the on the um the news and stuff. We hear about like oh the missing girl who was twenty three and all that. You know, it's like that's scary, and you know it's the person you're following this whole time. You um. But this one's much more of a showcase of these creatures who are just yes. super fucking creepy. These cyborgs that are half human, half monster and robot that you don't even like, they don't even, they've forgotten their humanity Yeah. at this point. They've gotten far, so far past that. They're just attacking and killing everything in their sight because they're, they're terrified. They're scared. They don't know what's going on. This SWAT team is clearly run by this guy who's kind of out of his mind and doesn't know what to do because he's so horrified by what he's seeing here. It's, it's, you almost want to defend the dude, even though he's clearly the antagonist of this skit. You know what I mean? Cause he's just like, we can't yeah. take home this girl. We can't, we can't take home this. This isn't even a human anymore. It's like, and there's that argument is, yeah. are they still human at this point? It's, it's great. It asks a moral question. It showcases these, these great characters. One of the scariest moments in this entire skit it, it, or in the entire movie, I would even say is when you see the girl on the table and like, she's just cut open and she's got all these yeah. wires and like, the, like you were saying, like these computer parts inside of her. And she's just saying like, kill me, you know? And then he just yeah. unplugs her. Dude, that's one of the, that's one of the scariest things I've seen in a horror film all year. That was, that, that messed me up. That was what stuck with me the most after watching this movie was that image of her eyes just going all white and like blank and she just dies. It's so, yeah. that's so fucked up. I loved it. I loved it. It, it did. It looked, and, and how well they, everything looked like, obviously it's designed to look like a low budget VHS thing, but like, I mean, everything looked legit. I mean, even the girl with the thing, like the wires in her stomach, like all of it looked like believable, you know? And it's just, it, it's almost that like question, like, like what is the soul you know like 
is is the soul like a, a, a part inside is does it even exist does it you know it's it's that question because like you see these things and it's just like it, it's like 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 the guy says you know like the the captain or whatever he's like you know uh, like she's not even human no more and she and he, she wants to kill him or kill or he wants to kill her and it's like and it's just like you're like like no it's not her fault but at the same time you're like you know maybe he's putting her out of her misery type thing it's just this it's just weird emotional roller coaster in many ways. And then like the guy that like is like trying to help her and like even turns against his team and stuff. Cause he wants to like save this girl. He just gets, he gets probably the worst death out of everybody yeah. because he doesn't just die. He gets his arms cut off. He's just <laughs> laying there like, just like bleeding out. And, and then she like fades to black or whatever. And then wakes up and it's just like, you're just like, what is going on? Like you think they're about to get away and then, Boom! Here comes yeah. the Hulk. <laughs> You're right. That the big monster. I oh god, I love it yeah. so much. Th this skit does kind of answer that question though. Because you're totally like that's something this indirectly deals with is what is the soul? Is is it is it a yeah. part of the body? Is it something? Is it a force that that you want? Is it your will to survive essentially? And I think this uh, answers that because like she's not human anymore. You see her head in a jar at one point yeah, and when she, then she looks in the mirror and she's got like just a, this whole robotic mechanism on her on the top of her head but yet she still tries to survive she still is trying to get out of there there are other humans who feel different ways about it you get the one soldier who feels compassion and wants to save her you have the other one who wants to put her out of her misery and kill her i think that indirectly answers the, the question of what is she still alive is she still a human yes i would say i would say yes because she's still fighting to survive she's still fighting to get back to her family and she does the last shot of this thing is like from like a shitty security camera and we see yeah. this like like slowly limping out of the building towards where the exit is assumably and it's great you have so many more questions does she just kind of like wander into the woods and live as some kind of fucking forest monster you know or does she yeah. does she make it back does she even remember who her parents are who she's living with who her roommates are you know what is her what was her life situation before this happened to her it's it's yeah. great to think about this one poses so many wonderful questions i could see an entire movie being based around yeah this absolutely sure. yeah it uh well and it's also like because she even tries to help the soldier you know, at one point so you you get to see that that moment of humanity in her you know like that moment of like you know she's not just a robot that's like i'm just gonna get out any way i can i just care about myself i just want to get home even after everything that she's just gone through i mean you just imagine the horror of just you know just being experienced like opened up and having wires put into you and and your head replaced as a camera and stuff like it's just like and to still have that humanity of like you know like this guy's trying to help me like I need to help him, you know, where she could have just said, forget it and just took off and let the, the, the sword slashing guy just like tear him limb from limb. And she probably would have gotten away. No problem. But she tries to go over there and like, you know, shows that humanity still inside her. And it's just, it's, it's an interesting, it was, it was, it was a very, like, I thought it was a very well thought out uh, story just from all the elements, just from everything from, you know, like the, the, futuristic elements although very extreme the the real world implications like what we got now the story just everything i thought it was really good oh yeah yeah i i loved this one the the yeah the world building too is great here you you feel like you've been transported into some kind of horrible nightmare it's it's done very well i love this one so much timo Gijanto is another up-and-coming director that i just cannot wait to see what he does in the future hopefully more than this fucking remake that's coming out. <laughs> you know, I want to see some more original stuff yeah. from him. Um, I, I, lo I love this guy so much. Can't wait to see what he does in the future. But any last thoughts on the subject? Uh, I mean, nothing major. I, I think we covered pretty much good point. I just, yeah, it's just, it, it's the one, like you said, it's the one that mm -hmm. sort of stands out. Like when all everything's said and done, that's the one that I feel like that and Ratma, just because Ratma is so like, Hail you know, Ratma, like man, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but to me, it's more so not even like, it's not even the story. It's just Ratma. You know what I mean? Like, cause you could, I could see you uh, watching that thing and like, just not even paying attention to like, you're just like Ratma, Ratma. You know? <laughs> I, I want but, more Ratma. Yes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> this story I felt like really is the one, is the one piece that you really like, like, Oh God, you take something with when you leave, you know, like, 
Yes. Yeah, the, but... the emotional weights of this one. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. I, I 100% agree. I, yeah, this one was definitely the one I was the most invested in the characters. I really felt bad at the ending and it's not even that long. You know, it's, you don't even think you spend that much time with the characters and yet you're still rooting for them. You're still kind of like upset to see this body horror happen to them. It's, it's, it's so <laughs> cool. It's done so well. And it's very tragic and, and fucked up. It's great. It's great. Uh, Timo yeah. Gianto, wonderful writer and director. Cannot wait to see what this guy does next. But moving on to our fourth and final skit by Ryan Prowse, The Terror. I, I love this one. I have seen, this is the one that I have seen the most complaints about online that people just fucking hate this. I don't get really? it. I think it's I think it's genius. I think it's it, once again a little more simpler of a story. It takes a familiar concept and kind of twists it in a totally different way. Vampires, but we yeah. see them, we see a certain aspect of vampires taken in a total extreme yeah. that I never would have thought, which is so fucking cool to me. But uh, what what do you think about it before I before I start getting into I, it? I enjoyed it, but but to be fair, I I can see why people might not because one. It's it's the same old it's, it's the same old trope of like these extremists. They're like these radicals that you know that are like trying to. Uh, they're essentially terrorists in many ways. Like that are that are using the the blood of the vampire as like which is like which is a crazy concept. You know, and, right. and think of like the the trope of like a vampire. Like you know they can't go in sunlight that kind of thing. And so like you know you have like that that to an extreme like the reason they can't go is because they explode i mean we even see at the end where he just like you know when he's like opens up the thing and oh yeah and and but and and it's just like i get it. it's like this long sort of drawn out mystery like you don't really know what it is at first until like probably the midway point and it's just like it just seems like a like these just you know white america white supremacist type yeah. guys that you know and and and, and in a lot of ways, it's, you know, it's, it's, I, I, from, from a societal standpoint, you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, okay, like we, we've seen it. So I can understand that like perspective, but like, if you really, I feel like it's one of those things, like if you really like give it a chance, it's really interesting. Like the whole side, and then the cop shows up and you think like, uh Oh, like they're in trouble, but he's in on it. And then like, you know, and like, and then you're just trying to figure out like, what like what is this really because i mean it opens with like the guy get like shot in the head or whatever like in the first like 30 seconds or whatever and like and then he's like you're like they just killed this guy and you think it's like these like terrorist group or something like that that's just like taking these people out and then you but then see it back. again and it, you're, <laughs> yeah and you're like wait is that the same guy is that a different guy like no that's the same guy like didn't he get like so then it's like is this like a groundhog day type thing like and then it just kind of like, and then you realize like, oh, it's like, and then you see all the, they have like the zoom away and there's like the crosses and stuff. And you're like, is this a vampire? Is it not? Like, what is going on? You, you can miss that the first time you watch yeah. it because there's all, there's garlic strung up in the crosses, yeah. but you totally like the first time you watch, like the first time I watched it, I'm like, why are they like, what is going on here? This is so weird yeah. and mysterious. You go back and watch it and you're like, oh, that's so cool. You know, it's another one of sense. those, yeah. yeah, another one of those things where it's like, you have to look for the little Easter eggs, you know, or, or you'll, you'll miss it, you know, and it's, and it's great. The, um, yeah. And it's, it's undeniable that this one is a little political, definitely a criticism of yeah. what, well, what's going on in America right now, which yeah. is unfortunate. Um, I, I think it's really well done. It's very genius. It's these characters you want you kind of want to see just get fucked up. They're very yeah. clearly portrayed as idiots who are bumbling around. They don't know what they're doing. And it's I think it's done very well. Another thing I want to say about this one specifically is that Christian Lloyd, who plays the cult leader or the terrorist leader, yeah. whatever, of this one, is uh, he's reached out to me a few times on Twitter. Oh, really? He posted a review of it and he said that he actually watched my review which is like what that's the cool. fuck <laughs> like that's so crazy and he said he said i'm so glad he liked it man that's awesome and i'm like oh my god thanks man i i was watching you and he plays a character in american gods that neil gaiman show i was like i watched yeah. you in american gods I, dude, yeah. I didn't even realize it was the same person i'm like oh my god then thanks for watching my my stupid my idiotic review like i appreciate it holy shit you know <laughs> i was that was i was geeking out dude a little bit you know yeah. i was like holy shit this is that's so cool should try to get um, him on the podcast. Oh my god, I would, I would kill. <laughs> if he's got some free time, I would love to talk about his skit. Yeah. Holy shit, that's so. It, it, I that's why I especially, especially have a um, a soft spot for this skit, just because I, I think that's so cool that he would even reach yeah. out to me and, and talk to me about that. It's so, that's so cool. I love all these people so much. You can tell they were all just so passionate about what they were doing. Yeah. It's so cool. I I love this skit. 
because especially because it takes that idea of vamp- vampirism something god i mean we have seen that since dracula yeah. from the fucking 30s dude i mean yeah. it's a, it's a concept as old as time and you take a, a concept so old like that and you spin it in a new way that's so cool and they do it so well the, the, just the idea of you don't even have to be a vampire if the blood is on you you're just going to explode in sunlight yeah. like that is so cool that is how yeah. dangerous vampire blood is and i i love the way they spin it the bunny scene is so fucking funny oh my god i mean the comet the slapstick comedy in this is done so well too which is so weird to think about but i love it i love this skit so much but yeah uh sorry you, you can go ahead <laughs> no no, no it's, it's fine no it was it was it was uh like the the whole concept of just like taking it to an extreme like and that and it, it sort of because that's all again like like going back to like the whole like vampire trope like you know they can't be in sunlight you know the 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 burn like we've seen that story time and time again like was Nosferatu or whatever it came out in like 1929 or something like that <laughs> yeah you yes. know so like it's been the same idea that we've always had for you know since they Bram Stoker and stuff like that you know and uh, and so to kind of like take that idea and I always like when like I I've always said this about film and period like you know like like take the idea if you're gonna like rehash it or remake it like take that idea and add your own like spin add your own twist to it and I felt like they did a great job with that and like you know like yeah it's like you have this group of characters at first that you're just like they're like what like what's really going on here and then once you realize like what they really are you 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 want to see them just get torn through and they, I think they did a great job with that. And and it is like, you know, it is sort of like political in, in some aspects, which which I don't mind because it's 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 cleverly political. It's not like just blunt in your face where people are exactly. like, okay, like we get it. Like it's it's very like, you know, it's just these like hillbilly backwood, just like crazy radicals that are just like, you know, like America needs to be restarted essentially. And they're just like trying to find, they captured this vampire and you have all the like how did they capture this thing like where did they get this from like <laughs> right. are there more out there like is this the only one and then you know like i said just the mystery of like him dying and coming back and then you know at the end he like explodes himself and and and, it, and then it's just like that's the end of it but you're thinking like did he just like completely kill himself is he able to come back because what did he get shot it's another thing to completely explode like how is he coming yeah, back? It's it's never, just, that's never really yeah. explained. You kind of see it like once again, this is one that ends with like a shitty like security cam footage. So you can yeah. you can kind of tell what happens, but not really. Like, is this vampire dead? How the fuck did they get this thing? The, they say yeah. um like there's a line where he's like, We've come in, we've come in possession of this wonderful metaphysical creature made by God, yeah. and we're gonna go and blow up a building or something. It's so it's so messed up. It's such a weird plan. How did this ha- like how did this happen? How did this conspire? I fucking God, I just I love this skit so much. I I think it's hilarious when the guy is like, "We're gonna get cork high and bottle deep," and everyone's just like <laughs> dumbfounded, like we're, yeah. we're gonna get fucking wasted. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, it's, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the dialogue between the characters is so exactly what you would imagine these people would would say to each other. They're like, yeah. "Oh, this big old gun is making my dick hard." You know, it's just like yeah. it's like I love it. It's it's great. It's done very well, and it's also not in your face like with the political stuff. Not as much as some of the other like political stuff I have seen. It's yeah. not even like it's. I've seen a lot of movies that have come out where it's like stuff I agree with, but because it's so in your face and it's like every line of dialogue has to be some kind of point that they're trying to prove, you lose yeah. this sense of horror. I've talked very negatively about the Black Christmas re- remake from 2019, which is yeah. talks about a lot of subject matter that I 100% agree with about how frat, frat uh, fraternities have gotten so toxic and fucked up with like rape culture and shit. And it's it comments on that not so well unfortunately i think i agree with the message that they're trying to send but literally every line of dialogue in that movie is trying to point point like just trying to make another point which it loses the horror aspect you, like yeah. I've, I've always appreciated the original black christmas for kind of commenting on the same thing but a lot more subtly and in underneath yeah. its its message and it, i feel like that movie does it really really well 
and this remake, unfortunately, it, it was rushed. And I've heard, I've actually watched some behind the scenes stuff with like the uh, director who said, who specifically sh said, she's like, I'm not trying to make like an anti-man movie. I'm trying to like make a point about fraternities. And unfortunately, yeah. because of the rush production, it comes off that way, which is, which is unfortunate because I would, I wanted that movie yeah. to succeed. It seemed like everyone involved with the project was really cool and fun and shit. And it seems like they had a good time making it, but it just doesn't, unfortunately, it didn't um, come out the right way, which, which is unfortunate. You know what? Uh, does it really well though. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I know no, it's fine. It's uh, you know what uh, you know it's another great example. Like uh, regardless of how you felt about it, but it's just it got so much backlash for this reason uh, that you mentioned is the new Candyman. You know, yes. like that was Candyman got killed for its like political standpoint. But the thing that people don't take into account that the original Candyman was the exact same thing. The right. only difference, <laughs> the only difference I think it is, is that this one, like you were saying with Black Christmas, like. It, this one is much more in your face and like blunt about it than the original one. The original one was more low key. Like you understood what the point was trying to make. It didn't have to say, well, here you go. Like it, it just was like, you yes. know, it was, it was in the process of the movie and, you know, and it was just a great where this one, I felt, you know, a lot of, I mean, it's not how I feel literally that was what the reviews were. It's what, that's what yeah. the biggest backlash was. And it was people from all across the board. Like it wasn't just like everyone you know, was white upset people with, or, yeah, no, you know, or whatever it was, it was everybody. I mean, people were like, it took me out of the movie. Like, and, and, you know, and, you know, like I said, however anyone feels about it, that that's what it was. And, and I think a lot of that had to do with this, like politics in film in general. I mean, this would be a good topic just to like, that we should all we should probably all talk about this on uh you know uh uh our yeah uh, i like i don't love talking about politics it's, man but like no, it's not, not sometimes it's in general, unavoidable just, in movies especially no, yeah, like yeah. this you know what i mean yeah no yeah, I, yeah. I i get what you're I, saying though you know you know yeah not like not specific i mean because politics are you know like i don't want to talk we're not politic thing but i mean <laughs> yeah. just like politics being inserted in films like different perspective different opinions kind of like what we're talking about now like we're not talking about politics specifically because i care less what anyone's you know opinion right, yeah. is we're, we're talking like about that. how it's how to execute it in a film yes yes and, I, and how it's just like it's getting so thrown in in people's face with all these movies i think people are starting to get even people that are for it like that are like, yeah, we need to Dude, buy the, are getting literally, sick of it. Yes, that's literally, you know? I'm in the same boat right now, which is like, and I appreciate uh, Terror by Ryan Prowse in this movie because it's yeah. done in such a way that's like, it's not in your face. It's like underlying. You kind of have to look for the message. Yeah. But with like Candyman, you're not like, if the point of that film is to try to make people understand the message you're trying to send, you're not going to get through to those people because what that movie's doing is it's harshly making fun of the people who don't quite understand the yeah. message. So how are you going to reach those people that's what that's what i don't that's what i don't get about it it's like you're trying if the point of your movie is to make people to spread awareness about something that is happening for example with Candyman, that's unfortunately happening to like the black community then you got to do it in a way that it uh, expresses it to those people specifically like i'm on board with that shit like it's like yeah we have to we have to start we have to change stuff that's just i, I don't want to get into politics anymore no, yeah. than that but of course um i just think that the the best way to execute it is how the candy man from 1992 93 yeah. uh 1992 yeah, whatever <clears throat> um the way that that one did it where it's so it's like it's there but it's not in your face it's not like saying like hey you're an idiot if you don't think this way you know what i mean like i love how yeah. the candy man 92 does that and how it does that like kind of in the background it talks about american politics from such a long time ago and how it was yeah. back then and how it's how it's still influencing culture today that movie does yeah. it so well. It's one of it's a horror classic for that reason and so many so many other reasons. I love that. Movie. Yeah, I, love I mean, it. well, Tony Todd is great. All that Tony stuff. Todd and, is phenomenal. And, yes, and I mean, I mean, like, yes, I mean, because we don't want to go too much into it. I mean, you know, because it's not what this is about. It's horror. We're talking VHS, but I mean, right. it is it is still a good it is still a good conversation. People like to hear this kind of stuff, but uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. Like I've always said, like, like when it comes to film and even music and art and stuff like that. Like it should be subtle in a way, like you said, to, to, cause that's the only way you're really like, if you're just in your face, the people that are the problem aren't going to, are, are just not even gonna, They're not even going to watch it or they're not even exactly. going to pay attention. They're just exactly. going to click off all the way through. So you didn't even reach the people you're trying to reach, like you said, but the other thing too, it's like one of those things, like, like if you didn't understand it, you're part of the problem type thing. Yes. Like I like yes. things like that. I like things like when like you, like this was very about that. Like, you know, if you, it's, it's, that's that's what the classic Candyman was was like if you don't if you didn't get what this was really about 
then then you might need to take a look in the mirror type thing where this one was like whether you get it or not you're going to get it because we're going to spoon feed it yeah. to you and it's just and then like it, what what that does is it sacrifices the quality of your movie which is exactly. unfortunate exactly. right because that movie it, it had so many really good moments but then it it, 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 it ultimately failed it, it ultimately failed. like it had a very clunky storyline which was, was just unfortunate but i I really enjoyed the terror or terror from Ryan Prowse. Uh, it, it's it's yeah. really it comments very well on like American politics and does vampires in a whole different kind of crazy yeah. way. But just to, just to wrap up this podcast though, um, <laughs> yeah, Tyler. Right? What, yeah, I know we're we're I'm just like oh my god, we're starting to ramble a little bit. But what what did you just any last thoughts on the terror in VHS ninety four? No, I like like I said, I, I think we we did a pretty good job covering it. I mean, we obviously went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, <laughs> but I mean it's good. Like I said, I mean it's 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 content. I mean it. I, I don't, it, it's something that needs to be discussed for, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's one of those things <laughs> yeah. that yeah. it is, it's, it's a real thing in the world, you know, but like, it, I felt like this did a great job from that political aspect that it was trying to hit home on. Obviously the vampire idea, it was, you know, a, a great sort of new take on that whole vamp, vampiric, uh, uh, you know, daylight blood type thing, which I thought was really interesting. It had its comedic moments. It had its, you know, what the F moments, you know, uh, I, 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 one critique is I, I felt like it could have been a little shorter. Same thing I said with the, you know, the, the, the wake one or whatever, uh, like that one, I, I felt like this is kind of the same thing. Like we kind of got the point and, and we could have just uh, like moved on a little bit. But other than that, I thought it was great. I thought it was, it was entertaining. Um, you know, and just, yeah, like if, again, just, if they would have just trimmed the fat a little more, I think it would have been a lot better. I think it would have been like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. 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 I, yeah. And just like some of my final thoughts on this movie is an, another thing that I, I feel like is so overlooked, especially in, in some of the major reviews about this movie is so, not what the time and dedication that went into this film opposed to some of the other VHS films. I'm not saying that the other ones, they, they like they clearly put a lot of passion and love into all these movies, even VHS yeah. viral that I think is maybe the weaker of, of all these movies. But this one, especially, it just seems like they really were trying to relaunch the franchise and they put their all into it. And to me, it's just like, oh my God, this is amazing. We've gotten movies all year that I, I have loved, but but there's been a lot of fan service in movies nowadays. Like Halloween Kills was great. My only gripe with it was that it's just, it's nothing, it's nothing crazy or new to horror in general. It's new to the Halloween franchise. We've never seen like a psychologically, a psychological thriller based Head and Field movie. It's it's more about that yeah. and Michael Myers just murdering people, which was cool, <laughs> just, yeah. right? Like it was cool, but it just wasn't anything original or inventive. And I just appreciate this movie for trying to do that, and it does it so well, in my opinion. Even for the people yeah. who don't believe that, I wanted this podcast to be kind of uh, a way to try to win some win over some of those people some because. People, yeah. I just, I love this movie, everything it stands for. This is the kind of movie that I personally would love to make in the future where it's something yeah. just so, it looks disgusting. It looks like you're not supposed to be watching it. And I mean that as a compliment in every way, yeah. shape or form. I love this movie so much. It's really something that's near and dear to my heart. And I'll probably rank it as number one for my favorite of the year. But yeah. uh, Tyler, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up this podcast? Yeah, I, uh, no, I mean, overall, I thought I thought it was a great film. I mean, it, it I love and I've even said this, I say this with films, period, especially Scream, because we've had tons of Scream discussions together, stuff like that. You know, like, I'm all for films taking chances, even if I hate it. At least you did something different. Like, like the last one we're talking about, the vampire and stuff like that. Like, it, it, like, it was something different. It was something so far left, you know, uh, even the, the one with the prosthetics and stuff. It's so, like, out there it's just like it's it's real world implications just to an extreme which i felt a lot of these like if you really boil them down they all had their sort of message and 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 like an extreme way because it's just the type of film it is but overall it's just i, I love when films take a chance i love when films take a risk and and are willing to to you know hey we're passionate we love it you know you're either gonna love this or hate it and I felt like this film did a really good job. Uh, another thing you said, discussing that kind of sparked in my head. Uh, did you know Bloody Disgusting was on the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Brad I didn't Niska. notice that the first time I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Brad and, uh, Niska from Bloody time. Disgusting was like he's been yeah. in charge of all these films, which is so crazy. Yeah. You know, it's, I never knew that yeah. until like I, uh, yeah, the second time I watched it, it, I went through it and I, I was just, I didn't, I was like do it because it was like in the credits. So like I was just doing some, and I turned around to go turn the TV off, and it was like. And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, I would have completely missed it <laughs> yeah. again because like, I would have turned it off. But 
yeah, it was, but no, overall, I did. I, I enjoyed this film uh, for what it was. I, 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 like I said, the second time I went around, I, I found a, a more appreciation for it. First time I watched it, I didn't think it was bad. You know, like, because you, like, obviously, like, we've seen them all, so we know what to expect to go into it. You know, you know, like, again, like, this is one of those films, like, you go into, like, you need to know what you're getting into. It's this just, you know, smorgasbord, just jumbled mess of just, like, chaos. And, and it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's again, an acquired taste. But, like, I knew what to expect getting into it. And I was like, okay, like, this was cool. Like, you know, like, I didn't, I didn't think it was great, but I didn't think it was terrible. And the second time around, I was like, okay, this is a little better. I, I mean, I still don't think it's, like, great. Uh, uh, you know, I, I just I, – but I do think it's – I think it's one of the better ones for sure. Like, I don't oh. know. And, and maybe I'm biased because, like, how I said uh, the first one, how I kind of just stumbled across it and fell in love with it. So it might just be, like, that's just the, the one that's, like, always – you know, it's just like when you find a new discovery. That's always the one that's, like – closest and nearest dear to your heart so that's kind of how i feel with the first vhs as opposed to this one um which i do i i'd put this one like what would you rank them in your opinion i, I don't know if you've done that on any man one. that's that see that's really tough i would probably go 94 to one viral like starting from okay. one to yeah bottom yeah you know? i would uh but that's yeah, tough probably, because I, what like one two and 94 i love almost equally which is really it's really tough to say that that's my final ranking because i think they're all very good viral is the only one that's a definite last but besides that yeah it's it's tough it just to depends on depends on your mood for the day honestly yeah <laughs> like yes <laughs> like, like, today it's number one yeah no i would uh i mean viral definitely is the, the least of them all um yeah like i said for me it's got to be number one and then i mean yeah i think Two, I think two and this one are like right there. I, I like I could, I think either way, either way. Like you know, I, like I put ninety four just because you love it so much. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do ninety four or two and then viral. Yeah, because but no, overall, I mean, I think the franchise. Hopefully, I would love for them to continue to make more. Um, you know, and uh, and hopefully we do get more. I would love to see Radio Silence come back. Yeah, uh, do some more. I mean, but who knows? I mean, de depending on how successful this Scream movie is, they might be busy for some time. That's, you know that's I mean? something I was going to bring up at the end of this podcast was this is the last oh, okay. VHS movie and the last podcast I'm doing on it. And I would love to see a VHS five happen in the future, but unfortunately I don't know if radio silence or David Bruckner are going to be a part of future installments. Although fuck, I would love to see that. I would yeah. love to see the two people who were like a part of the first movie come back for a new, yeah. new entry, just to, just to make like a little 15 minute skit, you know, just, just a little yeah. something. Just, How long yeah. would that take? You know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah you can do it real quick. I, uh, no, I mean, what would you be? Would you? Who would you want to see take over the franchise if they were to continue it? So I would love to see two people who are established filmmakers already come back, come back, like come back, because like that's kind of what happened with this this movie. Timo Jajanto and Simon Barrett came back to do skits for this one, but then you also had two mm -hmm. up and coming directors. In a future installment, I would like to see the same thing happen. I would like to see two like already established horror directors come on and do two skits and then also bring in, well, oh, and also Jennifer Reeder. They brought in three yeah. up and coming people who haven't really made yeah. any big movies yet, but they're like, they're known and, and, and are up and coming. I would like to, that's what I would like to see in another future installment. Just the, the same formula as this past movie, yeah. as the second, the first and second film as well. It's kind of like the same situation. I would love to see that happen again here um, where you have these, promising directors making skits or maybe like the wraparound and then you have um two that that are made by already established people to bring in fans i guess i would love yeah. to see radio silence and david bruckner be those two of people course. plus some other people that i might not know about um rose glass would be a great one she did saint maude is her first directorial movie okay i would love to see her do a vhs segment that's like that's like on my wish list i don't know if that would ever yeah. happen but fuck that would be cool um, but yeah, I would love to see that in a VHS five in the future sometime. One last, one last little question. So, like, do you do you prefer the the structure that that you know, like you said, the framing? Thank you for educating me. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, because because like when I was thinking framing, I was thinking like camera framing. Like you talk about camera work, cinematography. The cinematog but, what do you think specifically yeah. about the cinematography? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's a cool. It's a VHS yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, no, I mean, a great example is, uh, is, uh, 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 it starts with an, uh, mal uh, male malignant? the movie with the malignant. malignant. There you go. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Like that cinema, cinematography was great. 
I, I yes. thought that was like, it was very unique, very different. But anyway, sticking on this, like the question I would ask, do you like the sort of like framing of these type of films or do you want like a, like an actual story? Cause that's okay. kind of how they presented this 94, like with, with the trailer and stuff like that, it seemed like this thing with like the SWAT comes in, they're going through this thing and they find these tapes and I think even the trailer had somebody putting a tape into the thing and that, yes. that wasn't in the film at all. Yeah, and yeah. so like, yeah. So I like, do you like the sort of hodgepodge or do you like, so I'll, I'll say this Tyler, because I don't want to get too into this, but I, me, yeah. so me and some of my other filmmaking buddies were, I don't know if you've seen, I, I've been posting little updates on this alien movie that I'm a part of. I'm, I have a very small role in my buddy's alien movie. It's called Casadastrophobia, which is like yeah. fear of being taken into the sky. It's going to be a really cool little short film that I'm super excited to, to come out next yeah. spring. I have a very small role in it. I'm a little, I'm a soldier. It's, I don't want to, I can't say too much about it, but yeah. I'm very excited for that to come out. But me and those guys, we're talking about doing an anthology movie with a, the, the biggest thing about it that we have so far is a great idea for a wraparound segment, which is yeah. what I've always felt with like was the weakest part of the VHS franchise was that the, they don't really connect the skits all that well, which is like one of my biggest problems with it, which is why we're kind of going to do not, it's not going to be found footage. It's going to be like actually filmed little horror skits but we have a really good idea for a wraparound segment. And I would okay. love to see this movie, th this franchise have more of a narrative in their, in their wraparound segments like this. Cause this one, none of them really have that. And that's kind of yeah. like the whole basis of what our movie idea is. So we're, we're <laughs> going to do red right hand part two in next October. But before that, we're thinking about pumping out a little, little crazy anthology. movie. Yeah. Like that. So I, nothing's, cool. nothing's in stone right now. We're still just in talks. We don't even have like a treatment or a script or anything, but we're yeah. just kind of talking about doing like a little, little, little fun passion project in, in the meantime. So, um, but yeah, I, I would like to see in the future, a wraparound segment for a VHS franchise where it's something where it's like, for whatever reason you have uh, like, let's take this film, for example, you have a cult that for some reason is taking these VHS tapes, these snuff films, essentially with these paranormal aspects or supernatural aspects, whatever, and they're collecting them for some reason. That's what I want to see. Whatever it Bloody Disgusting wants to do, that in some kind of crazy and new way that they haven't done in the past, I will see that as such a huge improvement on this on this franchise. You can have a VHS movie that is flawless and perfect in that aspect if they just put a little yeah. more effort into the wraparound, which it always seems like the skits is where all the budget and all the time and focus goes towards, and they just kind of it just always seems like it's the wraparound's like a it's yeah. an afterthought you know what i mean yeah i would like to see them put a little more effort into that specifically in the next vhs installment that's my yeah. one criticism of the franchise besides that i love it even the bad skits i think there's even a lot to be enjoyed there like i was specifically talking about vhs viral the magician skit i don't i think that's the weakest skit of the entire franchise because of yeah. it doesn't fit at all but even that one there's a lot to love and that you can tell there was a lot of passion put into that one the performances are done really well it's just it doesn't fit in vhs at all yeah um I would just like to see them put a little more effort into the wraparound thing. That's my only gripe with the franchise. I think the rest of it is just so much fun and, and it's so exciting and creative. I love it so much. I would love to see more of these movies in the future because it's, it's the one thing where I, it's the one outlet in horror where I feel like I can get this original um, taste instead of just yeah. like a continuation or a same sequel. old rehash. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Everything's a remake, sequel, reboot. And I'm not complaining about that, but I would like to see more original movies get popular. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. this, for example, like, well, yes, I've always said, cool, but it's original. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've, I've always said time. like, I would, I would love to see like, like even the iconic classics, like, you know, Friday the 13th and Freddy and, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, all that stuff. Like, like you have the character, like, if you want to make new films, what's wrong with, like, taking that character and writing an entirely new story? You know? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, don't, don't like, completely get rid of the, the roots of that character. You know, Freddy is who Freddy is. You know, Jason is who Jason is. So on and so forth. But what's wrong? Like, kind of like what they're doing with Scream, where they're, where they're yeah, they're incorporating the OG3, but they're telling their own story. It isn't just, it isn't just a rehash, you know, Sydney's cousin's uncle's nephew comes out of the closet <laughs> as as the new ghost face you know it's like yeah. it's it's yeah. it's not it's 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 really not even about her anymore it's just she, they're just legacy characters so you got to be a part of it you could do the same thing with so many franchises you know take you know even this Halloween installment like excuse me you could have had Jamie Lee Curtis in it but as like you know like 
had a significant role, but which it kind of looks like they're doing, but like it's taken 12 films to get to this point, you know, like yeah. where it looks like Allison is kind of the one that's, that's and, supposed to be taking over. But at that, but it's at the end of the, it's at the end of the thing. So it's like, you know, and I'm not like, I'm not complaining. Like I'm all about no, making no, no, these exactly. movies, you know, like yeah. I'm so like Halloween kills was a lot of fun and I loved it. I just, I would like to see more original horror films like malignant, for example, was very yeah. original. Absolutely. I loved yeah. that one. That's definitely going on my top 10 for the year. I just would like to see more original movies like that get popular, which is unfortunate that like, dude, St. Maud, like this came out in 2019. I literally have it right in front yeah. of me. I <laughs> love this movie so much. It's one of the most original horror films I've seen all year. It wasn't released to American audiences until January of this year. It came yeah. out in 2019 and like it just kind of got popular. I just, I cannot believe, I made it, dude, I almost, I was going to make a video about it. I put out a poll. I was like, hey, would you guys rather me talk about St. Maud or literally anything else? And like, no one even knew what I was talking about. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> How is no one talking about this movie? It's fucking crazy. It's one of my, it's, it, it, if I could rank it as a best film for 2021, I would, because holy shit, nothing has scared me as much as this damn movie this year. I cannot. I haven't like, seen I, it. I have to. I have to watch. I mean, I've heard of it. I, I know of the film. I just haven't gotten a chance to get around to actually watching it. So, one of the scariest movies I've I've ever seen, and okay. it came and it got popular this year. I, I don't know. I I just wish more of these original films that are so underground would come up to the lights like this. And and VHS ninety four was another one. I did some reviews and like uh, updates on it, and no one like they didn't get any views, and it's so upsetting. Like I don't yeah. even I don't give a shit about my analytics. It's just the fact that yeah. no one's talking about them. I don't yeah, no like that's what it. I don't I don't get it's like this is this was one of the most original things I have seen in years and no one's talking about it and I, I feel like the only person who's getting real geeked out you know what I mean about about yeah. this one which is unfortunate because I feel like I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up and just end this no, podcast, yeah. this two hour yeah, long no. podcast but <laughs> yeah. you know, you know? Hey, I mean it, it's good it's been a fun conversation but no like what one last thing is that like I think uh to kind of hit on your point is I think that's one of the reasons that that like these foreign films are seeing so much success, like you know, like Squid Game and and you know uh, Alice in Borderland and and uh, what is Sweet Home with like the monsters and the things yes. like all of these like foreign films and like Saint Maud and and uh, what was it Veronica a couple years back like yeah, all these Veronica films really good yeah really got uh really got like popular and I think it's because of the originality like and some of them were. You know, you're t like Veronica was just like another demon movie, you know, possession movie, but like it was very different and it was very like, you know, it had its, it had its, you know, usual like, okay, like we get it, but they had some uniqueness to it. And like all of, all of these foreign films really seem to be like more original in its storytelling, uh, even if it is a, a rehash trope where it's just like here in America, it's like everything's just a remake and reboot. I mean, they're remaking, uh, you know, uh, uh, The Exorcist and stuff like yeah. that and and The Lost Boys and, and like these films that like, you're talking about some of the greatest films ever. I mean, globally ever. Like, I mean, and not every film needs to be remade or rebooted or whatever. And it's just like, have some originality because my fear is eventually the horror space is going to just get stale. I mean, you're going to have like the diehards like us, but you're going to get to a point where I think people stop caring. Now, although I've been very pessimistic about original horror films, you yes. like, and what, another thing I'll say before I get into that argument is that you do have, like, <laughs> you have to dig for your original horror films nowadays, which is my, which is the yeah. thing that upsets me. It's like, they're still being made. Like there's still a lot of really original horror films. I see all these people saying like, Oh, there's no more original movies. Yes, there is. You just have to look. What upsets me about that, though, is I feel like I'm missing out on more. Like, dude, I bet there's a hundred more original horror movies that have come out in the past five years that I've never even heard of and I'm missing out on yeah. because films like, and I hate to put blame on it, but it's because of films like Halloween Kills and Spiral that are so yeah. popular, which they're good. I like them and I love the Saw franchise. I love the Halloween franchise so much. And I will see anything that comes from, from both of those franchises. But it's like, I want, I wish more or original horror films would be popular and in the limelight a little more than how they are nowadays. Thankfully, movies like Malignant were really popular, which which yeah. is, I don't think that movie was perfect, but it was a really original concept. Yeah. And I, lo I loved it. It was great. It was a, it was a really fun movie. Um, I, I just hope more and more of those films get popular because dude, if you like looking back at the eighties, man, every movie that came out for the most part, like in the early eighties, especially was like an original new film. Yeah. The yeah. slashers were all kind of copying each other, but at least they were like different takes. They weren't all just yeah. sequels to, they weren't all just Friday the 13th sequels. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 
and we've kind of lost that a little bit in the horror space nowadays. But it's but to be optimistic, it's coming back. There are a lot more popular horror films that are original. It, it's slowly getting there, but it's just not quite to my liking, if, yeah. if that makes sense. I get it. I uh, no, it, it's one of the reasons why I've always. Like, I, I'm so, I, like, love, like, B-rated movies. Like I said, it's for, like, the idea of, like, like you go, like Halloween, stuff like that. Like, you expect them to be good movies. Like, when you go to a movie theater to see a movie, you're, you, you have this presumption that, you know, this, this film is going to be great, that this film is going to be good. Because why would they, you know, put all the money into it and that kind of thing? And then you go, and it's just like, oh, right? Like, like Halloween Kills. Like, I and I've said this publicly on uh, horror breakdown, things like that, like fate decided. Um, and I've said like, you know, like I did not like the movie at all. Like I knew what to expect going into it. Like I knew what I was going to get yeah, and I still I, didn't like it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hate it. I, you know, I, I still, I still really like it. And I, if I was like personally, and I, I mildly disagree just because like, I would probably rank it a little higher than most of the other sequels in the franchise. Also the competition in the yeah, Halloween man. franchise, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like there are, dude, the Halloween resurrection is a fucking disaster <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> compared to, if you compare Halloween kills to that, you know, it's a much better yeah. film. I, I really did like it. I just, my one complaint about it was that, yes, it did some new stuff for the franchise, but it wasn't new compared to the rest of the horror space. Like, compared yeah. to Malignant, that movie has been something that's been done a million times over and over again. Yeah. Halloween Kills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Malignant was so different. It pulled from all these, like, deep depths of horror. Like, it took kind of the concept of Basket Case, which, spoiler alert, I'm not, yeah. I don't want to Basket spoil anything, <laughs> but it kind of is, it's kind of Basket Case if, if uh, fucking the monster from that was, it was like, inside I, you know what, i'm not going to talk about it anymore yeah. if you haven't seen malignant i don't want to spoil yeah, it yeah. but i i just i did i really liked the original originality of that film even though it wasn't executed as perfectly as i wish it was but i would like to see more films like that that take chances not a lot of films are yeah. taking chances anymore and we're slowly going into this age of fan service i kind of talked about this on yeah. our live stream last yeah, yeah, yeah that's true yeah. i i don't know i i'm gonna end i'm gonna end my rant there <laughs> yeah. gonna end this no, podcast, no, no, yeah. But, yeah but yeah yeah were you gonna say something no, else? i'm sorry yeah yeah, no, no, I was just going to say, and that, that's, like, to, to wrap it up, was just, like, that's why I love, like, the B-rated movie, because you don't, like, you see a silly movie on, you know, whatever, Tubi or, you know, uh, <laughs> Netflix, something like that, whatever, yeah. and, yeah. like, you don't, you, you know, like, this is going to be terrible, but, like, you turn it on, and, like, it turns out to be a gem, like, that's so, like, rewarding for yes. me, you know what I mean? That's like, ex that is exactly what I'm like, trying to say, yes. Yeah, exactly, like, you know, like, you find, like, that film that, you just didn't expect like it looks terrible like you might like maybe it has a trailer for you, you watch the trailer like this is the uh, and then you play it and it's just like okay well this was really good like you know and it's like you know it might not be good compared to you know like the halloween standards but you don't have that expectation when you're going into it and and my thing like like with halloween kills just to kind of and then we can wrap it up but like uh like my biggest issue was like i i i didn't have a problem with like Michael going on this like rampage, this like killing spree. Like, I mean, it's the title is Halloween Kills. I mean, so of course that's gonna happen. What, yeah, <laughs> you know what you're gonna get. My thing was is that like, I really felt like overall that film had like maybe 40 minutes of real movie, like, and where I feel like you could have just skipped that movie, took 20 minutes and added it to one, and then 20 minutes and added it to the other, and it would have been perfect. Because I mean, even like the 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 mob mentality scenes, like that was so dragged. Like we got it. Like you made the establishment that they're that they're all banding together to take down Michael, and then you had, and then it was just like another like ten minutes of of uh, what's his name just running around all the townspeople, rallying up all the troops, giving the speech. They go to the car, they attack the thing, then they get to the hospital, and then there's like another like fifteen minutes of that. It was like literally like a quarter if not longer of that movie was literally just the mob mentality. I was like, you, we, we, we got it an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you could have just, and that was the problem. I just felt like there was no real story. Like the way they did the flashbacks was incredible. I really loved that. Like how they were able to, to recreate Dr. Loomis and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I don't want to turn this into a, a Halloween <laughs> yeah. podcast because I can go into this. Wait, this is a VHS ninety four podcast. What? Wait a minute, wait. wait we were talking oh, about the wrong. That. <laughs> it's like yeah, we were no. talking about Ryan Reynolds and uh, Will Ferrell. About how they'd go in the <laughs> <laughs> I love like, how I we just, just started that, talking like, about that last night. That was so funny. Like, so what did you think of VHS? And I'm like, VHS? Isn't this wait, 
this isn't the Halloween one. <laughs> yeah. But, but I cannot, anyway, I can't wrap. wait to edit this. Oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> Just to wrap this up, though, th yeah. first of all, thank you so much for coming on to talk about uh, VHS 94 and Halloween Kills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, Malignant. And, and Malignant. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, we talked about 12 different movies right exactly you got a little bonus to, to it a little, yeah, right. little couple of nuggets of other reviews <laughs> um so next week i am talking about uh devil's do with slasher theory very excited to talk about that That's um awesome. that is we're finally getting back on the um radio silence train with that movie yeah. we've been kind of i've been kind of talking about all the vhs movies and now we're back talking about the radio silence movies leading up to the new scream in january cannot wait for that movie, of course. We're so uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. I don't even know what I'm saying. Thank you all so much for listening to this podcast. We will be back next week, like I said. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're listening to this on Spotify or Anchor. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Go subscribe to Tyler's <laughs> channel too. Fate decided he does some wonderful Scream Five updates. If you have not seen those, go subscribe to his page right now. Go. I don't care what you're doing. Go subscribe to his page and and Killjoy Jake too. A little shameless yeah, self plug. You know why not? Yeah. <laughs> Got Tyler, it. once again, thank you so much for coming on. And of as course. always, y'all, don't forget to kill it out there.